Are you thinking of switching from multiple daily injections or pens to an insulin pump? I switched between these two for a few times and in this video I will share with you 5 things that I wish I had known before switching to an insulin pump. Is an insulin pump better than multiple daily injections? You will find out right here, right now. Let's go! Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tom, I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you navigate your diabetes journey. At the time when I was diagnosed with type 1, the only way to treat diabetes were the old school really big needles. There were no insulin pens, no insulin pumps, we did not even have a glucometer. We started really old school with absolutely no technology. I switched to insulin pens when I was 18 years old and that made things a lot easier. But my blood sugars when I was a teenager were like a roller coaster, a lot of up and downs. So that's why my parents and I decided to try out an insulin pump when I was 12 years old. At that time it was absolutely no technology and not a lot of doctors had experience with it. But we found one who was willing to put me on a pump. The clear pros of an insulin pump are things like you don't have to stab a needle in your body 4 times a day anymore. You are much more flexible with meals because you can make little corrections all the time. 0.1 unit here, 0.3 units there. Uh, you can have different basal rates for different times a day to deal with things like Don phenomena and you can just auto automate so many things. The obvious cons are that an insulin pump is super expensive when it's not covered by your insurance and you will have to have it attached to your body pretty much 24-7 for the rest of your life. So you will always have to find a spot where to put the insulin pump on your body so that it's comfortable for you and you can live the full life. So these pros and cons are quite obvious but in this video I want to talk about things that are not so obvious and that I only found out having used insulin pump for 20 years, days and nights with only a few little breaks. And number one is privacy. Although it's 2020 and the technology has been developing so fast, the insulin pumps still look very medical on your body. If you use Omnipod, you will be living with this big bump on your body 24-7. On the other hand, if you use Medtronic or T-Slim, which are the ones that I used lately, they have this tubing which is quite hard to hide and also get stuck on things, especially if you wear the pump in a pocket or on the belt like me. And most of the people will really notice that you have the pump on your body. And from my experience, half of the people who notice it will either stare at it or will start asking you questions. And this bothered me a lot, especially when I was younger. I got more comfortable over time, but it still gets annoying when you have to respond to the same question all over again. By the way, the T-Slim insulin pump, which I wear right now is great, but if someone from the Tandem company is listening, could you please guys do something with this huge connector for tubing? I mean, when I wear my pump on the belt or in my pocket, it just looks so medical. By the way, if someone who has T-Slim is watching this video, let me know if you found a way how to hide this connector for tubing under your clothes when your pump is in your pocket. Now on the other hand, once you get used to an insulin pump, it's so easy to bolus when your pump is in your pocket or under your clothes and you don't have to pull the injections and take your bolus in front of uh, many people when you go for lunch or dinner for example. So from that perspective, pump can be much more discreet and you can also bolus on the go, which I don't think you can do with uh, insulin pens. Observation number two, it is so much easier to get into a DKA when you have an insulin pump compared to pens. And that's because insulin pump is using the same insulin for bolus and basal and this insulin is usually a rapid acting insulin that peaks in one to two hours and that only lasts for three to five hours. So as a pump user, you need to have this rapid acting insulin circulating in your body pretty much all the time. If something happens with your cannula or with the pump, you need to be able to find an alternative solution pretty fast because the insulin you have on board will be gone within three hours. 
If you use multiple daily injections, you typically don't have this problem because your long lasting insulin usually lasts for about 24 hours. So you always have some insulin on board and the risk of getting into DKA is much lower. And this is quite important because as a pump user, I don't always feel like carrying a spare infusion set on me. But when something happens, I need to be ready to act quite fast and just go home and get that cannula changed. Observation number three. The thing that I hate probably the most about insulin pump is that it gives me a really hard time when I decide to do a workout or just go for a walk spontaneously. Because I have this rapid acting insulin on board all the time, when I start moving the insulin starts working much more effectively and my blood sugar just plummets right away and it's very very fast. A good way to deal with it is to reduce my basal rate well in advance of the activity. But had I not done it, the only way for me to avoid a hypo is to load myself with some quick carbs. From my experience, the long lasting insulin that you take in an insulin pan does not get impacted so much by the physical activity and you don't drop so much and so fast. Number four, the amount of supplies that I need for my insulin pump is huge. So for one month, I need a pack of cartridges like this one. I also need a pack of infusion sets like this one. I also need some needles and injections to fill the cartridges. Uh, you know, if you're a Medtronic user, you also need batteries and you use quite a lot of these batteries. And of course you need a spare pump in case of your pump stops working. And in case the spare pump stops working, you also need some additional injections that you can use in the worst case scenario. So really the amount of supplies that you need to take with you when you travel is huge. Number five, when you start with an insulin pump, you will be overwhelmed. You need to learn how to fill your cartridge, you need to learn how to do your infusion set, you need to remember to change your batteries, you need to figure out the pump settings, the pump interfaces, you need to tune in your basal and bolus, and you also need to think about a million other things. But once you get all that tuned in, you will have so much more flexibility and so much more control over your diabetes management. My personal favorite two insulin pump functionalities are temporary basal rates and super bolus. I mean, super bolus is not an official function, but I use it a lot. Temporary basal rates allow you to reduce or increase your basal for a set period of time. You can be anywhere between 0% and 200%. And I use this every day, any kind of physical activity or when I'm sick, I always use temporary basal rates. And that really helps me keep my blood sugar in range no matter what I do. Super bolus allows me to imitate pre-bolus. And I do it anytime when I don't have time to pre-bolus and I want to avoid that post-meal blood sugar spike. How I do it is I basically increase my bolus by the amount of insulin I would take in the next two hours in a form of basal rate. And then I decrease this basal rate that I used in the bolus to zero to compensate for that. So in total I take the same amount of insulin, I just have this insulin in my body and on board much earlier, which kind of imitates the pre-bolus. I explain all this in detail in another video and I will link it here for you and in the description below so that you can check it out. The new pump I have, T-Slim X2, has also a functionality called Basal IQ. And what this does is that allows the pump to communicate with your CGM sensor and create a closed loop, adjusting your insulin dosage depending on your blood sugar levels. So it will automatically reduce your insulin dosage when you're going low and automatically increase your insulin dosage when you're getting too high. Uh, this functionality is not yet available in my country so I haven't had a chance to test it but I'm really looking forward to test this one and I'm sure this will become my favorite functionality because being able to be connected to a closed loop that's officially licensed and approved by the manufacturer is a big deal and I'm so much looking forward to this and uh, I'm sure this will take a lot of stress of my diabetes management. So would I recommend you to switch to insulin pump? 
Uh, you know, everyone is different and if you prefer freedom and you are able to dial in your blood sugar levels without using uh, insulin pump, you absolutely don't have to do that. But I think that the fact that I've never been off the insulin pump since I first tried it for more than a few weeks uh, kind of speaks for itself. Although I had a few complaints about insulin pumps in this video, I think I wouldn't be able to keep my blood sugar in range and keep my HbA1c at around 6% without using an insulin pump. So it's probably my second best tool in diabetes management toolbox after a CGM. By the way, I have a whole YouTube playlist about Freestyle Libre, which is the CGM I use. If you wanna watch it, click on the video that you can see on the screen now. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next Type 1 Talks video. Ciao!